have a close look at this linear model. It tells you that the only thing you need to do in order to earn significantly more money is to get older. But why does one group of people earn so much more than the others? And is a single model able to catch those groups? Well, when we look at education of these 3000 people, we'll see that most of the richest people have an advanced degree, while most of the poorest people have just high school or below. And if we create five models instead of one, we'll see a much more useful story. For instance, the increase of salary with age is much higher when you have at least some college degree as compared to no education, so that at the end of life we'll end up with an impressive salary of $150,000, while without any education we'll never cross 100,000th mark. So it seems like education matters, and this slope clearly tells us that. However, despite the fact that the slope of the advanced degree is much smaller, which could suggest that education is not worth the effort, the intercept tells a different story, namely that folks who invested into education up front start their life with the same salary some college guys reach only at the end of their life. So you see how much more useful five models are compared to one. But what about 10 models? For example, when we group our data for health insurance. And what about 20 models when we account for different job classes? The more models you create, the more useful insights you'll get. Then what about 1000 models? Ok, ok, we don't have to exaggerate. Let's stick to only 10 models and learn how to easily compute them and get all useful information like slopes, measures of fit and p-values out of them. The wage data you have seen on the plot is part of the ISLR package. If we have a glimpse at it, we'll see categorical variables education and health insurance. A simple cross table reveals how many observations we'll have in every of our 10 models. But before we can model, we need to split our data into 10 groups using group by function and then log these 10 groups into 10 different datasets using nest function. In a nested data frame, each row is a meta observation where categorical variables education and health insurance define our 10 groups, while the list column of 10 datasets could be seen as 10 lockers which contain individual observations belonging only to a particular combination of education and health insurance. And if you think that the list column of datasets is a crazy idea, wait a second and you'll see how useful it is. Imagine you'd need to write a code for 10 different models. That is not only a lot of work, but is also prone to mistakes. Moreover, you'd need to store and organize 10 different model objects somehow, because they contain information you need. And while it kind of works for only 10 models, what if you really need 1000 models or more? Well, map function from per package provides a much better way, because it applies a function of your choice to each element of a list. For example, if we want to multiply every element of our list by 10, we map over every element of this list, where every element of this list is represented by the dot. Similarly, we can map over every meta observation of our nested data frame, and apply a linear regression to every of the 10 data frames which are stored in the list column we called data. Moreover, rather than leaving the list of models as a free floating object, it's much better to store all of our models in the next list column. Let's call this column models. On top of that, let's now map over our models in order to extract the coefficients with 95% confidence intervals model quality indicators and even predictions and store them all in separate list columns. Now, with a minimum of code where it is difficult to make any mistake, we have created a small and clean nested data frame with five list columns where all the related objects are stored together. Such nested data frame could be seen as a well-organized cabinet with 50 lockers containing all important information we need, which is easily accessible anytime we want. 
For example, we can have a look at the first model or its coefficients. We can check all assumptions of the second model at once using check model function from the performance package, which I already reviewed on this channel. We can look at the model quality of, let's say, a model number 4, or we can plot predictions of a model number 9 using plot model function from another amazing package, sjplot, I also have an extra video about. And despite the fact that we could easily plot all 10 models by mapping through the whole list of models, it is sometimes better to simply unnest the list column back into a regular data frame. This is useful when we want to put all the results below each other, be able to sort, compare or plot all 10 models simultaneously. For example, we can unnest the coefficients and see all 10 models below each other. We could unnest a list column quality to extract some model quality indicators, then easily remove some unnecessary columns and sort the data frame for R squared in order to rank the goodness of fit of our models and see models that don't fit well first. The worst model appears to be college graduates with no health insurance. How could they? And lastly, we can easily unnest our predictions in a separate data frame, then plot the original data and linear models which are already built into the classic ggplot commands by intentionally leaving same blue color for different insurances and making them a little bigger. And finally, plot our predictions on top of them with different colors in order to see whether our predictions worked well. And voila, our predictions perfectly fitted the blue lines. Wow. This beautiful picture is worth a thousand words. But if you need words and want to learn how to easily and correctly report statistical results with text, you need to watch this video.